How is it going guys? This is the last of the series Dervish. Those who have been playing Guild Wars for more than a decade will remember that Derf wasn't always as bad as, as it is now. The 2011 skill update introduced fresh enchantment and improved many Derf skills. This is when Derfs became like half gods. So why is this class so special? What can you do as a Derf? Let's say you want to do speed clears. Okay, you can do that too. You want a solo farm? No problem. You want to beat endgame content? Alright. You want to run faster than others? Okay, you can do that too. You want to heal or protect allies? Sure, Derfs can do that. Uh, you want to get fancy avatars and look like the gods? Hell yeah, man. I guess you know it already. Dervish has diversity, maybe more like any other classes in the game. They have many attacking skills, simple spells, enchantments, flash enchantments and adrenaline skills. Uh, they are like a mix of martial and a coaster profession. And I would say 99% of their builds rely on enchantments, but this is not a surprise since their primary attribute is mysticism, which works somewhat like expertise does for rangers. Each rank reduces the cost of dervish enchantments by 4% and also gives plus 1 armor for each rank while enchanted. All the avatar forms are in this family, also skills which boost HP, prevent spell usage, heal allies or even damage enemies. The next attribute is called Earth Sprayers. Guess what? Many Earth damage paths can be found in this group. Skills here may increase damage or defense. The third attribute is Sight Mastery. I haven't mentioned yet, but if you are wielding a sight, you can hit not one but three enemies at once. This is not a dervish only feature, any class with a sight can do this but obviously Durfs can use this skill the most. As a Dervish uh, you, you will rely on sight more than anything else. The free enemy hitting is a very useful in both adrenaline building, life stealing or energy gains. And the last attribute is Wind Prayers. You can rush on the back of the wind or deal cold damage, transfer conditions to fools if you invest into this group of skills. By default Durfs have 70 armor just like Assassins, but with enchantments this can be much much higher. 4 pips of regen, this gives them the freedom to use some energy heavy skills and their HP is the highest of all since they possess an inherent 25 HP boost. About weapons I can tell you that almost every time you'll be using a sight, zealous vampiric mods are extremely useful uh, since the energy or HP gain are also tripled if you can hit 3 enemies each time. A 20% enchant extension is very comfy or you can use a defense mod too. It can negate some damage. During those rare occasions when you'll be running non-side builds, a dagger may be used, uh, a staff or shield set for running, but really for casual PV, sight is fine. Alright, let's see the advantages and disadvantages of a derf. On one hand, the DPS is one if not the best in the game, and this is especially true if you can ball up fools. Many of their builds uh, offer AoE damage and can hurt multiple fools. Their armor and survivability is great. The pro dervish can tank for long without taking a sweat. They are also one if not the best solo farming classes. They can heal allies, have fancy avatars and can inflict or remove conditions. Plus they have spell prevention abilities too. And let's not forget they are the best runners in game. With pious haste and warven stability they can maintain a 50% IMS forever. But on the other hand, Durfs are extremely enchantment sensitive. If your build relies on enchantments, necros and mesmers may give you difficulties. And of course their anti melee skills hurt too. Think of spiteful spirit, ineptitude, empathy, etc. This is pretty much everything as you can see the difference now. Tons of pros and only two cons. Durfs are deadly even without any secondaries, but assassins and warriors are two great choices. Uh, Asa gives them the ability to reach fools immediately with death charge or you can tank fools with shadow form or use dagger spam. Warriors also offer dervish some useful skills, think of save yourselves for instance, extra handed armor for the whole party or for great justice, double adrenaline for 20 seconds and some very specific builds may, may rely on Ritu, Monk or even other professions but those aren't often used in every days, so generally speaking I think Warrior and Assassin are the two best choices. After the secondary professions let's go to the tips and tricks section. This is what separates an average and a pro derv. Without doubt the best tip for dervish is to learn bowling and placement. I've seen it a thousand times by now, bad placement and attacking the wrong target. Uh, I mean, as long as you have multiple enemies to fight, if there is a chance to hit two or three at once, you must do it in order to increase your DPS. This is a common mistake for beginners, they keep on hitting a single target, 
uh, but sites have that lovely ability to hit three foods at a time so we must use it out as much as possible you can build up adrenaline faster your dps sky rockets and you gain free energy or 15 hp depending on what site you have i'm gonna try and make a more detailed bowling guide soon but guys try to play derby smart the next tip is my favorite one sprinter weapon and strength of honor sprinter is like it was made exactly for derbs use it against the border group and you can make ridiculous spikes I love when fools try to use a skill, uh, I use Lizard's Assault to interrupt and deal like 300 damage in 2 seconds. If you fancy using avatar builds, best to use them before the fight so they won't get interrupted. Aura of Holy Light deals nice AoE damage each time Dervish enchantment ends on you, great skill. And I haven't said much about flash enchantments yet, they are like the best thing that could have happened to Derv in 2011 uh, with, with the new update. No costing time, no after cost delay, meaning you can use these skills while running without stopping at all and enemies can't interrupt them either. Mysticism reduces this energy too and there are many to choose from. You can pile up 2, 3, 4, even more of these and start the fight immediately with the buffs. There is one second limit by using several ones, uh, but this takes away nothing of their usefulness. If you are having trouble staying alive, rely on as many enchantments as you can. With Windwalker insignias and 4 enchants you get 20 extra armor. I know they are pricey but trust me they worth it. Uh, if you are broke you can start with the cheap alternative blessed insignias but long term you will need the Windwalkers too. Certain earth sprayer skills provide massive blocking ability. Mirage Cloak can help survive against a high number of fools. If you combine it with extend enchantments you can maintain 75 or even more blocking chance forever. Mystic Regen, Mystic Vigor, Grand Sora, of Wolf Pioneer also helps to make the Dervish tough or even intimidating aura and many of these skills are in the mysticism attribute and, and that's widely available for most casual and solo builds too. Increased attacking speed and movement speed both are highly recommended so the sites have one of the slowest attack speed in the game but with Heart of Fury, Drunken Master, Pious Fury etc you can increase it. Remember guys, the faster you attack, the higher your DPS gets. For great justice is also a great skill for Durs. If you hit several fools with it, you can spam skills like Chilling Victory, Crippling Victory, Reaping Parties and deal massive AoE damage. I have mentioned the weapons before, but I'd like to emphasize a bit. Uh, for energy heavy builds, use Zealous Sight of Enchanting. If energy management is not a problem, you can use a Vampiric Sight or, or even a Sundering one. For side builds, the side plus one plus three headpiece is recommended. For earth sprayers, users plus one plus three. For running uh, plus one plus three mysticism, you may get a wind prayers headpiece too, but uh, those are kind of rarely used. So for runs, one superior rune in the headpiece, one or two minor runes depending on your build, five wind walkers, a major or superior vigor, and some energy boost. Uh, to be honest, I prefer energy over HP on Durf simply because of their inherent 25 HP boost, but you can go for HP too, both can work. Alright guys, now let's focus on builds, especially on meta Dervish ones. Pious Renewal is a great skill and let us feed certain Derv enchantments. I haven't mentioned it yet, but some Derv skills give you more damage or additional effects if you sacrifice Derv enchants. The elite skill is perfect for this situation because after removing it you can use it again and again because it recharges itself and also gives you some HP and energy. Aura of Holy Might triggers each time you lose a Dervin chant, dealing 25 holy damage to adjacent foes and also you deal nice single target and AoE damage. You can interrupt, remove stances if the conditions or provide damage reduction which save yourselves. This is the one I've been using for casual PvE for long. It works great, has decent damage on both single target and board up groups. The next is probably the most often used elite of all Durv elites, Wow of Strength, Drew Spiker build. The more fools are around you, the more deadly it gets. Often used in speed clears too, in solo farms, but it has a place in casual PV too. Combine the elite with sand shards, staggering force and hero might's attack and spike down enemies. Abbott Battle Standard increases the damage nicely and Mirage Cloak blocks most of the enemy hits. Feel free to add further PV only skills like Save Yourselves, I'm Unstoppable, Drunken Master, etc. There are many versions of this build. You can focus on only DPS or both defense, healing and damage. A great build indeed. 
And of course derps have dagger spam builds too. And Zealous Wow takes care of the energy management. At 14 wind prayers you get 6 energy each time you hit foes. Dagger skills cost 5 energy each, meaning uh, you will never run out of energy. Increase the attacking speed in the form of Heart of Fury or Drunken Master. And Mystic Vigor provides 25 HP gain and you can add other PV skills too. This time I brought I am the strongest, a shout, but you can bring anything else. The avatar of Lisa recharges Dervish enchantments 50% faster and also steals 1 energy from nearby foods each time you lose a Dervish enchantment. Aura of Holy Might again, extra damage when you lose a Dervish enchant, raid DPS, energy steal from mobs, and Pious Fury or Drunken Master provides some extra attacking speed boost and Heart of Holy Flame set foods on fire. Uh, the new anniversary elite for Dervs is the Wow of Revolution. Using this skill you get an extra 5 energy regen and the skill renews itself each time you use a non dervish skill. So basically as long as you use the proper skills you have 9 pips of regen. And this allows Dervs to play a support role using secondary professions. This is the Monk Protection Prayers version uh, with Spirit Bond, Prod Spirit, Shielding Hands, Absorption, Ages or even Imbue Health. Uh, the latter can heal an ally for 300 every 10 seconds. Uh, and in case the energy regen wouldn't be enough, you can use Aramite Zeal, which gives maximum 16 energy uh, if enough foods are in earshot. The Ritualist version focuses on healing, Spirit of Life, uh, Protective was Kaulai, Man, Body and Soul, Spirit Light and Spirit Transfer. Uh, I don't say that these are better than the Monk or the Necro counterparts, but the new elite offers a whole new gameplay for Dervs. Um, we had healed Dervs before, but they were not as viable as these builds. If you are bored of doing melee all the time, try out any of these builds and I think you won't be disappointed. These were the meta builds in my opinion and now let me show you some fun builds. The avatar of Balthazar provides plus 20 armor versus physical damage, 25% faster adrenaline gains, your attacks deal holy damage and set foes on fire each time you, you lose a dervish enchant. This build can inflict a bunch of conditions like crippled, burning, bleeding, deep wound, blindness, cracked armor, but all for a short period of time. If you wanna try something new, bring a Mesmer hero with fragility and fever dreams, uh, because these two skills work perfectly well with this build, since you, you apply conditions and can and you can also remove them with the reap imparities. The next one is also interesting, the Avatar of Dvaina. Each time you lose Dervish Enchant, you lose 1 Hex and also heal allies in earshot for 53. Best to combine this elite with a short duration, short lasting enchants like Whirling Charge, Fleeting Stability, Mirage Cloak or Attacker's Insight. Uh, meditation gives back 4 energy each time you lose an enchant and Serpent's Quickness helps with the recharge times. The Avatar of Melandru gives uh, plus 150 maximum HP and plus 30 armor versus elemental damage and it cures one condition from all party members when you lose a dervish enchantment. You can use intimidating aura for even more HP and aura of holy might and the usual dervish skills to provide both DPS and support to your party. Almost the same build but avatar of rent and grand Sora. this build can steal HP from foes by keeping a part of the DPS. Grand Sora is one of the best dervish skills in my opinion, even with the low wind prayers rank you can steal a lot of HP from mobs. And Grand's fingers can transfer two conditions from yourself to all nearby foes, this is another great skill and each time you lose an enchantment you, you can inflict disease to foes. If you wanna play like a true vampire lord, try the next build, the high rank of mysticism and wind prayers is all you need and hardly any casual groups can kill you. If the build is used properly, it can steal over 200 HP with each attack. If you pop pecans and cans, you get 42 HP from the avatar, 75 from Mystic Vigor, uh, 15 with the Vampire Sight and 96 from Grand Sora. Uh, this equals 20-28 uh, each time you hit 3 enemies. And let's not forget the other defensive skills either. We have plus 4 HP regen and extra 24 armor from Vow of Piety. And blocking and weakness on foes, extra HP and damage reduction too. Obviously for casual PV this is way too tanky, uh, but it's kind of entertaining how foes can do nothing with you. 
The last build in this category is Onslaught, Wind Prayers Elite. This skill provides both increased movement speed and attacking speeds and also faster adrenaline gain. The rest of the skills are rather well known, flash enchantments and skills which remove them. Great build, but I think this elite is more often used in PvP than in PvE. Uh, I feel like Durves deserve a standalone section for running builds. Uh, after all, they are the best runners in game. Uh, with Zealous Renewal, Pious Haste and Warm Stability, they can maintain 50% running speed as long as they want. Uh, I'm Unstoppable takes care of the knockdowns and crippled uh, by Shadow Form protects from spells. Shroud of Distress helps when HP drops uh, below 50% and the two teleport skills uh, both speed up the run and helps getting out of crowded places. Consider using Deadly Paradox if uh, Parma Spell Prevention is needed. Vow of Silence Runner is the next one. Vow of Piety gives HP regen and armor boost, but the rest of the build is almost the same as it was at the Shadow Form version. Sadly, the Elite doesn't let you use spells while it's on, but at least enemies can't use spells on you. Uh, with good timing and practice, you can maintain close to 50% speed boost with it. If you think that I show you tons of dwarf farms now, then you are wrong. Sadly I can't show more than 5 or 6 this time, but at least all of these are great farms and Dervish is probably the best choice for each. The best solo farm has to be the Winds of Change Ministeria Commendation farm, especially during Favor when more Anid Golds may drop. Tons of old school gold items, some very sought after skills like bow staves, platinum wands, bladed shields, all 10 types of tomes. And of course the Ministeria Commendations too, which can be used to craft uh, Tengu Flares. You clear the first part of the quest with heroes, then flag them and run with Miku. Stop at the stairs, wait till fools get stuck and spike with 100 blades. Conviction, Grand Sora and Healing Sidnet will have to stay alive. Probably the best solo farm if there is no favor is the Chaos Plains Underworld farm. You can finish the whole run in less than 30 minutes and you get somewhere between 4 and 5 Actos on average. Use Vow of Piety followed by Grand Sora and Vow of Silence, then use Synod of Mystic Speed to avoid interrupts and we can fuse with the, with the Shout. I'm Unstoppable gives plus 24 armor, so it helps a bit with damage reduction too. Uh, you can kill fools with Reap Imparities and Aura Slicer, and the Cupcake and the pump Pumpkin Pie is recommended. Although with experience you can kill fools without these as well. Another Underworld and Acto farm, but this is for smite crawlers. Much easier to reach their place than the Mesmers, and the full run can be done in less than 8 minutes. Extend enchantments and Mirage Cloak gives nice blocking chance. Uh, Mystic Regen have to negate the damage loss and send shards. Wow Strength and Eremite attack take care of the enemies. Good practice for beginners to just make sure you clear the way to the area and flag them somewhere away. Did you know that Durs can completely solo Fissure of Wu? If you don't believe me, check out my vid, uh, it took me like 3 hours but it's definitely possible. This is another Wow Silence form but here we focus more on spiking. You move like a dwarf and finish him helps much against monks and warriors. Hobby shards, shadow weapons, dark remains and go piles of glittering dust will drop here. The penultimate farm is the Raptor farm, this is another WoW strength build, another great spike, the Mirage Cloak and Armor Sanctity is your defense and the elite with Mark of Pain on two Raptors plus Aramite's attack is how to kill Raptors. If you forget to use uh, Mark of Pain twice, all the Nestlings will die except Rakov. And the last farm on my list is the Waitir farm, this and the Raptor should be farmed during special events when the festival items drop. Uh, the new Necro Elite and Soul Taker works hand in hand here. Although the Mesmers have clumsiness, you can still kill them with appropriate for timing. Uh, when only one second left of the Hex, use Aramite's attack and all the way tears die. Mystic Regen, Great War Farm or Intimidating Gora helps in reducing the Mesmers damage to zero. If you want more details of these solo farms, take a look at the description. I made a guide for each of these places, also all builds you can copy paste from there. And now let's continue with some speed creep stuff. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, Durves are often used in Speed Creeps too. Uh, typically they take the role of a WoW Strength Spiker and are often used uh, as tanks too. Uh, in Fissure of Food there is like two or three Dervishes. They have kind of the same build, WoW Strength, Sand Shards, Ebony Escape, Mystic Regen, Mirage Cloak, Staggering Force and Eremite's Attack. Some Dervos have uh, solo parts too, 
uh, some go with the main tank, but the end result is always a spike and corpses everywhere. In the underworld, doors are also used in Ombre Way. This is a very similar role like before, uh, spiking groups and staying with the main team. Shards of War is another one where doors are used. They have a very similar build and they are responsible for spiking some boss groups. At Fendi, the doors buffs the rangers with Grid Wolf weapon, but they stay out of combat. And of course, in dungeons, like in the Regards Managery, Durs has a place too, or in the deep, plus with pecans and concepts, you can solo full, full dungeons too. So guys, this is what Dervish is about, bunch of meta builds for DPS, many solo farms and tank builds, spiking in the speed creeps, running like Usain Bolt, some fun lifesteal, heal and prod builds, and enchantments all day all night. Uh, this was the last episode of the Profession Guide series, Hope you learn something new every now and then. All the builds and some additional videos you will find in the description. Uh, you know, if you enjoyed this one, please consider subscribing or give this video a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.